precious name. Amen. We are into 2022. I remember, yeah, kids, you can head on out. I remember uh, when 2021 was starting, and we were all saying, oh, yeah, 2021. Whew, no, you know, I'm looking forward to a new year. It's going to be so much better than 2020 was. Eh, was it? Feels like a lot of just the same. But we're in 2022 now, another year and another set of possibilities and problems, and we will face both possibilities and problems. Now, I don't have a prophetic word here in that I don't know what 2022 is going to hold. I certainly hope that we're over pandemic in 2022. I really do. I really do. I don't know what dreams or plans or goals you have for 2022. And sometimes feel, life feels like a map in that you kind of know where you're going and life is just about charting out the best path to get there. And sometimes life feels like maybe a jigsaw puzzle where you're just picking up these pieces and you're like, where is this supposed to fit in? And you don't really know. In our house, we have a, uh, a bin. We have a bin for our different kids' puzzles. And sometimes the boxes get destroyed. Um, and uh, so we put the puzzles into these little Ziploc bags. And that's always fun because... Um, can I pass? We, can, we can go up to the next one, and then I'm, I'm, it's, it's freezing up again for some reason. I don't know why my thing's doing this, but... We have this, so we have these bags, these Ziploc bags. Well, because of the age of our children... Uh, sometimes uh, the pieces don't always make it back into the same Ziploc bags. And so you pull out a puzzle, and uh, you pull out a piece in that puzzle, in that bag, and you sort of wonder if that piece, A, where it goes, because you don't have the picture anymore, because that got destroyed. And so you wonder, okay, well, how does this fit into the big picture? But then you also wonder, does this even fit into the big picture? I can't even say with confidence that this piece even goes to this puzzle. And so it's like, it's a real puzzle, because you're actually like trying to figure out so many things all at the same time. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like life is a little bit like that. There have been moments in 2021 where you pick up a piece and you look at life and you say, first of all, I don't entirely know how this fits into the puzzle. Second, is this even supposed to be in the puzzle? Like, is this part of the plan? Is this part of the design? Or is this some random piece that got shoved in by accident? What is going on? And so in the chaos of our world, and certainly in the last couple of years, it's easy to start to wonder, does life even make sense? Is there a big picture? Is there a grand design? Is there something that each of these pieces of my life are, are, are being placed together to build and to create? And so today we're doing something a little bit different. It's a, it's a Sunday of difference. We're team preaching. And so we're going to have a few of us on, on staff sharing a little bit. But I'm going to start out. It's, uh, team preaching is kind of like a little jigsaw puzzle. But together, we want to encourage you as we begin 2022. We want to encourage you that God has a purpose, that God has a plan, that God has the power, and that God uses people. So my part is purpose, God, to lay some groundwork here. And I just want to say this just out for God has a purpose. Okay, in the ups and downs of life, it's easy to forget. God has a purpose. And God doesn't do things by accident. In the accidents of our life, don't stop God's purpose. And even in the consequences of living life as fallen people in a fallen world, God's purposes will be accomplished. And so I just want to say that today. I want to speak that over us. I just want to declare it, that God is working out His purpose. That what seems like chaos in our life does not stop God from accomplishing His purpose. It's not a takeaway from the purpose of God. In Psalm 33, the psalmist so beautifully writes, but the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. 
the purposes of his heart through all generations. We stand firm through all generations. And so just like a cosmic puzzle, God is putting the pieces together to make a picture. 2021 was part of that, believe it or not. 2022 will also be part of that. And we only see the picture in part. And some of the pieces seem pretty random right now. And some of the pieces definitely feel like they're from a different puzzle. Or maybe even, have you ever tried to build a puzzle upside down? Maybe it's like we're looking at a puzzle from the underside and we can't quite make sense of how the pieces go together. And we begin to wonder, God, do you have a purpose in all this? And God does have a purpose. And he is accomplishing it. And so today I want us to encourage us that we can trust in our God as he arranges the pieces into the beautiful picture of his purpose. And here's the really good news, is that you are in that picture, that puzzle that God is building, you are in it. You have a purpose in God's eternal plan. Paul writes to the Ephesians in the, in the very first chapter, he said, in him you were also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purposes of his will. That God has chosen us. He's called us. He's selected us. He's invited us to help carry out the purpose of his will. God does not do random. It feels like random, but God does not do random. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus' disciples were constantly confused. They didn't understand what he was doing or why he did the things he did. But, God, but Jesus always had a purpose and was always accomplishing his purpose. See, Jesus left his place of power in the throne of heaven to come as a tiny, helpless baby to accomplish his purpose. Jesus went to the cross and died and was buried to accomplish victory in his purpose. And through it all, God was accomplishing his purpose. His purpose, in general, is to restore his creation. Salvation for our broken, lost, and lonely world. A world floundering as it lives in separation from its creator and savior. So we each have our goals for our life. And that's a good thing. And I can't promise you that each of your goals, God is going to bless in a way that you're going to see it as you imagine it succeed. I can't promise that. But I can invite you to be a part of the purpose of God, restoring his world with the good news of Jesus. And that is a purpose that is being carried out, and it will be accomplished. So I want to finish my part with this, from Proverbs 19. The wise sayings, many are the plans of a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purposes that prevail. Good morning, Richmond Baptist. It's good to be with you virtually. Today is January the 2nd, International Day of planning things. Have you already started planning the next year or this year 2022? Maybe you're going to start working out or eating better or playing a new instrument, learning a different language. The year that comes brings a lot of possibilities and expectations. Do you know that humans are the only species in creation that plan things ahead? animals they eat and migrate by instinct but we are the image of god and planning things is a god thing god has a purpose for creation and a purpose for each one of us and he plans things directing them toward his goal what he planned or uh, or his purpose we reflect his image in the same way by establishing goals and planning things to accomplish them. 
For us, we can plan things for the next weeks, years, maybe decades if you're planning to buy a house. But God has the whole time in his perspective. He was there even before creation, maybe 5,000 years ago. We don't know the age of the earth. And at that time, he knew that we would be here having this talk in Richmond in January the 2nd. So sometimes understanding God's plan is challenging for us because we don't have the same perspective. We are looking for we are looking at different angles and we have a narrow, a simpler perspective than him. So eventually there are times in our lives that we don't understand what, what God is doing and why is he leading us towards that path. There are lots of stories in the Bible that remind us that God has his plans and he uses us simple persons to accomplish his goals, to accomplish his purposes. Eventually, his plans don't match ours, and it can be frustrating and challenging. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, David was right before fighting Goliath. Everyone was discouraging him because he was a young guy. He wasn't experienced and facing Goliath was a huge challenge. He remembered them from a situation that is quite peculiar in the scriptures. He tells them that when he was a shepherd, he was shepherding his father's sheep by himself alone. Then he faced a lion, a, a lion, lion not a figurative lion, like a real one. And it caught the ship. David went into the lion's mouth, recovered the ship and killed the lion. Can you imagine what passed in his mind at that time? He was alone with hundreds of ships, which aren't the smartest creatures in the world. And he faced a lion. He was already anointed king before that, that moment. Still, he was facing a lion. How would God allow a lion to attack him? If I was in his position, I would go crazy because like, it doesn't make sense at all. But later, when he was facing Goliath, he remembered from that a frightening situation and God was there with him. And if God was there with him when he faced a lion alone, he would be there again with him facing Goliath the giant. So God has his plans. He planned that meeting before when he was alone to prepare him for the following situation when he would meet Goliath. I don't know how many years later. God does these things because he has a different perspective. Eventually, this year, we're going to face things that were not in our plans. They can be really big lions that we're going to face. Still, God has a plan for us. He had a plan for Goliath. He has a plan for me. He has a plan for you. And he has a plan for our church, for all creation. It's challenging to trust God's plan because we don't have the same perspective. But we serve the Almighty God that created everything and will be with us and it will send his and send his Holy Spirit to encourage us. The stories that we have in our lives prepare us next. It is challenging, but trust the Lord. He has his own plans. See you next week. Hey church family, it's Kleber here. I hope you guys are doing fine during this holiday season. Wow, uh, 2021 is gone. And welcome to 2022. And I was thinking about uh, what I can say for the topic, God has all the power. Because it's so difficult to try to frame God in a picture that we can see especially on this time when 
our generation is facing a global pandemic that changed drastically our way of living. Lots of families are in pain. Uh, they are faced, for many reasons, they are, uh, some of them um, lost their level, loved ones. They passed away. Some families are facing job losses, financial issues, and so on. Some of families, uh, especially immigrant families and seniors, uh, they are apart from their loved ones for so long. It's causing lots of uh, loneliness and depression. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of uh, issues out there. You can name it. But uh, I know even though life could be hard, we must trust in God that is still holding all the power. In John 16, 33, the disciples were very sad when Jesus said to them he was about to live into heaven. Then Jesus encouraged them, uh, saying, In this world will you have trouble? But take heart, I have overcome the world. What's interesting on this topic, it's because I've seen that like some people using this same verse, even in Portuguese or in English, saying, uh, you may have trouble, you might have trouble. But it's very clear here, it's not you may or you might, it's not a possibility. It's 100% sure that will you be facing challenges in your life? I know, I know, it's, it's tough, it's very tough. But who is able to understand God's mind? He has all the power and knowledge. And then he offers to us the partnership with the Holy Spirit in our lives and difficulties. This partnership you're going to help us, you're going to shape us to be stronger. And then you're going to lead us to overcome 2022. In 2022, let's leave the God's power work in our lives through the Holy Spirit. We must picture, no matter wiser we can be, will you never understand God's thoughts? Like he mentioned in the Romans 11, 33, 36, that I'm going to read for you right now. Romans 11, 33 to 36. How very rich are God's wisdom and knowledge. How he judges is more than we can understand. The way he deals with people is more than we can know. Who can ever know what the Lord is thinking? Or who can ever give him an advice? Has anyone ever given anything to God so that God has to pay them back? All things come from him. All things are directed by him. All things are for his praise. May God be given the glory forever. Amen. So this, this is my kind of a small devotion about 2021 and challenges and trials that I had in my personal life and then the things that I must trust in God in 2022. Because no matter what, no matter difficulties that we are facing, God is still holding the power. God has the power and then everything is for His glory and then we must understand that. Let's get this uh, thought in this beginning of 2022 and then lead us to 2022. Okay? Bless you guys. Hello, dear family. 2021 was a year of many challenge for everyone. But also, as assured, we had the opportunity to support our community. 
since January, every week we receive food donations from different supermarkets. And this food was delivered to the door of more than 25 families. Additionally, each month we made more than 100 baskets with cleaning products were prepared and distributed. We are grateful for God's faithfulness and care for our community. God bless you. We thought it'd be good to get people involved, knowing that God uses all of us in, in different ways. And so we talk about what's coming in 2022 and the purpose that God has in our, in our lives and a plan that he has laid out for us. The power that he, he has to, to accomplish all that he has planned. It's not up to us to accomplish the plan, but it is up to us to do what he calls us to do. So purpose, plan, and power, and people, he, he uses us. He uses us to reach out and show people his enduring and unconditional love. I don't know when you read through scripture what kind of excites you. Uh, there's different things along the way, but... I kind of like when I read the New Testament, getting to the end of the book, because at the end of the book, oftentimes there are names of people that we don't know about. When we think of, you know, godly people or, or people of the Bible, we think, oh, we, our minds go to Abraham, the, the big names, Abraham, Moses, David, uh, Jeremiah, Peter, James, John, and Paul. We, we think of the... the big people. But at the end of a lot of the epistles, there are, quote unquote, what I'm calling the not big people. The not big people that we think, oh, they're just kind of add-ons, but I don't believe they're an add-on. Epaphras. Artemis. Tychicus. Trophimus. Eubulus, Archippus. I mean, those are names of people that you probably like, Pastor, are they really in there? Just, just read through the end of those verses of the little books. But there's one that actually sticks out to me. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 13. It says this, She who is in Babylon... Chosen together with you, sends you her greetings, and so does my son Mark. She who is in Babylon, she doesn't even have a name. Like, her name didn't even get in there, and yet, I think she's really important. She who is in Babylon, you who are in Richmond. We don't need to be the big name we need to trust God. To trust that he does have a purpose and a plan and, and the power and that he uses us as people. And that's why Rhodey shared what we're able to do as a church family. You know, it's not the big names that get things accomplished. It's really the people around. I remember being at camp and, and learning and going through it. And you think, wow, the director, he's out there. The, the camp that I got my education in uh, for Christian camping. It was a big camp and everybody knew him in that area and, and he was out there in schools and everybody knew the name Dick Angelo because the camp had a reputation. But the reputation isn't built by the one person in charge, but it's built by the people who are around him. 
around that person, him or her, who, who do the work behind the scenes, whether it's cleaning or, or, or running a program or making sure that letters are written and that donations come in or whatever it is, it's the collective body. And I think that's what happens if you look at Paul, he talks at the end of a lot of his books about the people who are around him. That enabled him and encouraged him. I think it's really important. And so we don't look at the big names. And yet we tend to. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5, it says, What after all is Apollos and what is Paul? Only servants through whom you came to believe as the Lord has assigned to each his task. I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God made it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who makes them grow. The one who plants and the one who waters have, no, have one purpose, and they will each be rewarded according to their labor. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field. You are God's building. doesn't matter if we're the guy up front. I couldn't accomplish anything. Pastor Kamal can't accomplish what he does. Jared, Priscilla, it, it's not about us as leaders. It's about us as a church family. We truly can, the motto we had a few years ago, we really can do more together. I recall statistics from years ago that says it takes seven to ten people to be interactive with an unbeliever, a non-Christian, before they become a follower of Jesus Christ. It's not one. Billy Graham didn't win thousands of people to God. Billy Graham was just one person who was involved in it. There were a lot of people who were out there sharing the love of God with those people, preparing them, planting the seed. And that's our role. We're not alone. We're not solo. We can't make things happen. And so I want to conclude with thinking of, of that. So often we do. We, we think of the struggle. We're not sure what's, what's going on. And so when we're uncertain, we kind of throw up our hands in despair. I've been reading through Ecclesiastes, one of my favorite books in the Bible. I know that kind of sounds weird. A lot of people just think, oh, it's meaningless because that's kind of the theme of Ecclesiastes, but there's so much truth in it. Ecclesiastes 7.14, it says, When times are good, be happy, but when times are bad, consider this. God has made the one as well as the other. We like the good times, but God's there in the other. And you've heard it many times this morning, and I just want to reiterate it one more time. It's that we don't understand, and so we lose patience, and we kind of give up. It says in chapter 11, verse 5, as you do not know the path of the wind or how the body is formed in a mother's womb, so you cannot understand the work of God, the maker of all things. We don't understand, but we can trust. And that's a perspective we want to come into 2022. It's not that we need to understand, it's that we need to trust God because He knows. And we have a job to do whatever that job is and it's not going to be the one that you think it is probably. So many times we do have this plan and people plan as Jared's, Jared read. People plan but God does His purpose. And it's different. We had no clue what we were going to be facing two years ago. We had no clue what we're going to be facing these days with pandemic. And, and we really have no clue what 2022 is going to be like. A month ago, we were hopeful that we were getting the pandemic behind us. And then Omicron hits and it's like we have no clue all over again. But the truth is, God's not shocked. He's not surprised. He's not throwing his hands up in despair. And we don't need to either. We need to trust. We need to put our lives before him. 
And that's what 